In this video, we're going to see the, um, the material of uh, sections 7, 8, and 9 of chapter 10 of uh, Cummings and Kaufman. We're looking at um, now the source of energy of the sun. And it turns out that um, because uh, the, the sun is so big, it uh, has a lot of mass. This mass, because of gravity, pushes all of its mass into a very high density and at the core the material that is in the core will be under a lot of pressure and will be uh, under um, high temperatures and it is because of those um, high temperatures that um, temperature is a way of uh, measuring the kinetic energy which is the velocity of particles so the particles will be moving extremely fast inside, but they don't have a lot of space to move. So they will be colliding with one another. And because of that, the stuff will combine by attaching to other particles and creating new stuff. This is known as fusion. And in particular, in the case of the sun, we have mostly protons in, uh, and neutrons, and they collide and bind to each other, forming a deuteron and helium. And helium would be the um, the stable end product of this of these reactions in the process when all of this is happening all these collisions there are electromagnetic radiation uh, radiations that are being produced and those are known as gamma rays and that's uh, basically the energy under which uh, the sun is functioning now those gamma rays do not come out of the sun they will be absorbed and transformed into other types of uh, energy and eventually we're, we're going to get visible uh, light out of it but um let's look at the reactions that uh, take place in the sun we're gonna i'm gonna run this video nuclear okay, fusion um, is what happens that, in the sun uh, it's the combining detail, of light elements into next, heavy uh, elements uh, to produce energy the sun produces a large amount of energy by combining very light elements such as hydrogen to heavier elements such as helium and then lithium, oxygen, carbon, right up to iron. They combine because once you get the nuclei sufficiently close together, there is a very strong attractive force called the nuclear force which holds them together. The combination of the two masses is slightly less than the masses individually. So E equals mc squared very small change in mass will give you a very large change in energy because C is, of course, the velocity of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. The sun, however, works by combining very light nuclei, such as hydrogen, to make helium, and you also gain energy. But to get them that close is very, very difficult, and it needs extremely high temperatures, and that's what you've got in the sun. It needs very high temperatures. Let us review these reactions in uh, three steps. In step one, we start with uh, a hydrogen nucleus, which is basically a proton, and another hydrogen nucleus, another proton, um, moving and colliding with each other. It turns out that uh, when, when that happens, uh, the proton has the ability to turn into a neutron. And by doing so, since the neutron has uh, a difference in mass with respect to the proton, there's going to be the excess mass is going to be released as electromagnetic radiation and as an anti-electron, which is a positive electron. Now, there are electrons floating around, so this positive electron will very soon find a negative electron and will annihilate with each other, producing uh, gamma rays. So we're going to have um, a neutrino coming out and gamma rays coming out. This neutrino we're going to see later on that um, is, uh, is it presents a, a very interesting phenomenon that, uh, uh, that uh, deserved the Nobel Prize uh, two years ago. But anyway, so this would be the first step. In this first step, we start with two protons and we end up with this, which would be heavy hydrogen or uh, deuteron. 
In the next step, we would have the deuteron, the heavy hydrogen here, colliding with another uh, proton. And in doing so, they both protons get attached to the neutron, and there is a, a gamma ray being released. And this is all, uh, known as a helium atom because it has two positive charges and a neutral one. And But it's not the stable helium, but it's uh, uh, the, the so-called triton, which is helium-3. And this is not the end of it. Now if you, we have a helium-3 here colliding with another helium-3 here. They will click on each other. They will collide on each other and forming something that is extremely stable, which is um, the nucleus of a helium atom, or also known as an alpha particle. And the excess protons will come out. And um, in doing so, there will be more energy released. But this is going to be the final product of these uh, step, three steps in this uh, the so-called proton-proton chain. In summary, we have that um, we're producing from hydrogen, we're producing helium, and that helium is uh, stable and uh, in the process there is a lot of energy released and that's what gives the energy produces the energy to the sun we're going to see what happens to that energy soon but for now let us look at um uh, uh, the fact that since the sun it has all uh, gravity and has all that mass that is pushing in so um, that would imply that uh, the, all, all of the mass would fall onto itself and going all the way to the, down to a uh, a very small uh, point, except that um, because there is all of this, uh, co all of these collisions taking place and all of these uh, gamma rays being produced, all of that produces an outward pressure, which we call the gas pressure. And it is this balance between the gravity, gravitational forces and the outward pressure, what keeps the sun stable. So the sun is basically not shrinking and not, not expanding. It is in equilibrium. What happens to all that uh, energy that is produced? Well, it is produced right here. And this is a cut out uh, section of the sun. At the core, this is where all the reactions take place. This would be, this wiggle lines would represent the gamma rays coming out. Well, these gamma rays is, are nothing but extremely electromagnetic radiation, extremely high energy electromagnetic radiation. And in passing through, <clears throat> they will be losing energy, depositing the energy onto the rest of the gas. This is basically uh, protons and neutrons all around. And that gas is going to get heated. When it reaches the surface, it will start a loop known as convection. So we have uh, the core producing the gamma rays. We have the so-called radiative zone where all the gamma rays move to and lose uh, their energy. And then we have the convective zone, which is where the gas begins to move as a heated gas. And it produces the granules out here, the shape uh, that we can see uh, on the surface of the of the sun. And of course all of this happens because of uh, the interplay between uh, the gravitational push in and the pressure, gas pressure that pushes out. We can see the um, how the um, mass is uh, distributed in the, in the sun. For instance, this would be the mass from going from 0% to 100%. This would be the radius of the sun. We can see that at the center there is very, very little uh, mass <clears throat> that it rapidly increases. So by the time that we reach, say, 60% of the radius, we already are at 100% of the mass. Basically, this would be very low density layer of gas, but most of the mass is going to be here in the in the core. Um, if we want to look at the temperature, we see that inside of um, of the core, we're, we're going to have uh, temperatures in the millions, this, the units are millions of degrees, so we're, we're going to go up to 16 millions at the, at the core. And by the time that we come out to the outside of uh, the outer layers of the star, we're going to be 
down in the thousands, not millions. The density also changes. This is the mass per unit volume. It also drops very rapidly. And this would be the luminosity, which is the, uh, the amount of energy coming out, um, uh, out of the sun. We can see that it's little here, but it, as soon as it reaches about a one fifth of the radius, that is uh, constant. The radius of the sun is uh, 696,000 uh, kilometers. Well, in section nine, uh, we now address uh, what happens to those uh, neutrinos, those particles that come out. Turns out that those neutrinos, uh, that are that are neutrinos that are being produced in every reaction that goes from protons into helium, and those uh, reactions produce. Uh, 10 to the 38 neutrinos per second. And all of those neutrinos, turns out that um, the neutrino is a funny particle. It's something that is uh, extremely non-interactive. The neutrinos do not interact with um, much. They can go through the earth without um, suffering a collision. So it is um, a very elusive particle, very difficult to uh, detect because it, uh, you cannot stop it. So all of those neutrinos that come out of the sun, they go in all directions and they come to the earth and they pass through us. And about a hundred billion neutrinos pass by each square centimeter in every second. The, a square centimeter would be the size of your, um, one of your nails. So, but in, in any case, um, you, we can come up with ways of detecting it. And long time ago, a, f a few decades ago, when they began detecting the neutrinos, they found that it, they were detecting only one third of the reactions needed to make the sun uh, function. So they say, well, how come, the, is it that uh, not all the reactions are producing neutrinos? Or why exactly one third? Well, uh, the story went on and on for several decades, but uh, turns out that what happened was that the neutrinos come in three different, uh, we call them flavors. There, are, there is a, an electron neutrino, there is a, a heavy electron neutrino, and a more heavy electron neutrino. The, those heavy ones go by the name of tau and muon neutrinos. So we have electron neutrinos, tau neutrinos, in mu ne neutrinos. And it turns out that the device that was uh, invented to detect the neutrinos was looking only at the electron neutrinos. Well, all of the neutrinos that are produced in, in the core are electron neutrinos, but they, on their way from the sun to us, they turn from electron neutrinos to other types of neutrinos, and we end up getting only about a third. And um, these neutrinos, uh, the, the, the oscillation of neutrinos was um, the, um, the topic for the Nobel Prize. It has earned two different Nobel Prizes, one uh, uh, several decades ago and another one very recently by Kahita and uh, McDonald. And these two guys, one from Canada and one from Japan, got the, the Nobel Prize for uh, coming up with ways of detecting neutrinos. And this is one of those devices that is used to detect neutrinos. It's filled with um, extremely high uh, pure water. And um, all of these little things that you see on the surface of this uh, uh, spherical uh, tank are light detectors. When a neutrino comes into the water, uh, some of them, not too many, some of them will collide with a a molecule of water and will produce a flash of light and that flash of light actually will produce a, an electron and a, a positron that will produce a flash of light a, two flashes of light one is going to hit on one side the other one is going to hit on the other side so whenever you have you get two flashes of light lighting up simultaneously that means that a neutrino has been absorbed and this is how it is detected we're going to see more about neutrinos when we talk about supernova explosions. And this concludes um, the chapter. The, um, in this chapter, 
in this chapter we saw uh, about the um, the atmosphere of the um, of the sun we learned about uh, the convection of gases uh, the different layers we talk about the granules the photospheres the convective zone and we we talk about um, all the effects that, that happen in the corona the ejection of gases the, we talk about the magnetic fields about the sunspots the periodicity of the sunspots we talk about the different um, uh, phenomena that eject gas from uh, the surface of uh, the sun we talk about the, the model that explains how the magnetic field entangles around the surface of the sun and produces the black holes, I mean the, the sunspots. We talk about uh, the reactions that produce um, the energy of the sun, the so-called hydrogen uh, fusion reactions. We also talk about how a little change in mass in those reactions produces a lot of uh, energy, which is the energy that we receive from the from the sun, and um, we talk also about um, the um, what happens to that energy, how is that it moves around in the inside of the sun, and we talk about the neutrinos. There are a bunch of uh, funny words that you can use to impress your boyfriends girlfriends, family members, uh, can you pronounce, let's find a, a funny one, helioseismology. Dad, you know I want to change majors and I want to study helioseismology. Hmm. Well, there were some uh, questions at the beginning. Uh, what percentage of the solar system, of the solar system mass is in the sun? Well, it's 99.85%. How does the sun have uh, does the sun have um, solid and liquid interior like the earth no it's just a uh, gas it's a plasma what is the surface of the sun like well there is no solid surface it is just a uh, you know hot gas does the sun rotate indeed it does but it does differentially it uh, rotates uh, differently at the, uh, the equator than at the poles what makes the sun shine? Well, this is a joke. You are the sunshine because, like the uh, uh, song says, you are my sunshine. My own. Sh no, I'm just kidding. Uh, thermonuclear fusion is uh, what produces the energy. Uh, matter and energy conserved. Yes, but not independently. They a little bit of mass is being uh, uh, transformed into electromagnetic energy. And this is the end of uh, uh, of this uh, video, and this is the end of chapter ten.